What's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. Today we are going to go over everything that is going to be in set 5.5. We're going to see everything that's leaving from set 5 and all the new stuff as well. So just as a teaser for the video, we are going to have two entirely new traits along with 12 new champions and a couple of mechanic changes. So I did get to play test the game because I got invited to the preview and thank you guys so much for all your support because without you guys I definitely would not have been able to do that and I'll definitely be doing some giveaways in the future to kind of celebrate that but let's get back to set 5.5 because that's the way I know everyone is here and I do want to get into the core mechanic changes first. Essentially set 5.5 is called Reckoning, a Dawn of Heroes, and it is essentially the aftermath of the battle between good and evil, because before we had Dawnbringers versus Nightbringers, and we also had the Order Pengu versus the Chaos Pengu. And essentially, well, the good guys won. So what that means is, and this is probably one of the biggest changes, is all the shadow items are gone, and we are getting a new set of Radiant items. So Radiant items, they are going to be items that you could only get one of each game, and you get them from an armory, which is on stage 3-6. Now you might be wondering, oh, I thought we had an armory on stage 3-2. Well, that armory is going to be moved now to the 3-6 one, and now this only shows you Radiant items, and it shows you five of them. So they designed it in a way where there's always going to be something good for you to get there for your team. So even though you might not get, like, the very best item for your specific team, you'll always have something that's, like, very usable. At least that's what they told me. I'll tell you guys what each of the new Radiant items does, but first let's get into the other new mechanic, which is Radiant Blessing. So again, this is part of the good guys winning. As soon as you drop below 40 health, you receive a Radiant Blessing. And every player gets one every single game. And similar to Lucky Lantern from set 4.5, every player gets the same thing. So what does this mean? Radiant Blessing is going to be a type of comeback mechanic where if you drop below 40 health, you get a couple buffs faster than other players. This is different than Lucky Lanterns, and I actually think this is a much better system because there isn't too much comeback in TFT in its current state. Another interesting play it could open up is let's say you are high health and you see someone drop below 40 health and they get the blessing. You could actually see what they get, and if it's something really, really useful for you, maybe you could go ahead and sack a couple around in order to get whatever the loot was from that Radiant Blessing. One of the new drops from this Radiant Blessing is called a Tome of Traits, and this is essentially a new rare drop that can come from any blessing or a gold orb, and it activates an emblem armory with four emblems. And emblems are going to be a little different. So they remove the shadow item, so I'm going to tell you guys what every spatula item builds now. But we do have to note that in this Tome of Traits thing, you could get any synergy imaginable. So you could get a ranger synergy, you could get a brawler synergy. Traits that did not have an emblem item before now have one from this Tome of Traits. All right, now let's get back to the radiant items. So again, Every shadow item got removed, and shadow had a theme where they got a big buff, but you did have to deal with a drawback in each of those items. So radiant items are completely different. They are just very, very good, and there's no drawback anymore. So play with them as you wish, and I personally like this change a lot. Shadow items were kind of fun for a little bit, but they're really not beginner friendly at all. It essentially doubles the learning curve for items for new players, so I'm very glad they got rid of it. Uh, but let's take a look at what these items are. So starting off at the top, let's go over Radiant Archangel Staff. So what this does is each time the holder casts their ability, they gain bonus ability power equal to 75% of their maximum mana, and this bonus applies to that ability cast as well. Next up, we have Radiant Bloodthirster. So Radiant Bloodthirster deals physical damage and heals the holder for 50% of the damage dealt, and upon falling below 40% health, the holder gains a 60% max health shield that lasts up to 5 seconds, and you get a bonus 30 attack damage. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention guys, some of the items they need like a little bit more balancing. So some have a radiant bonus, which gives either the unit a particular buff and some even give your team an entire buff, which we'll get into once we see it. So now onto blue buff, after casting their ability, the holder gains 30 mana and you also get a radiant bonus of 30 ability power. So this is a big change because before they had shadow blue buff and shadow blue buff allowed for a lot of goofy things to happen. So that is just completely removed from the game, which is probably a good thing. Next up, we have Radiant Bramble Vest. This negates bonus damage from incoming critical strikes. On being hit by an attack, you deal 150, 200, and 300 magic damage to all nearby enemies once every 2.5 seconds, and you get a Radiant Bonus of 40 armor. Radiant Chalice of Power. When combat begins, the holder and all allies within one hex in the same row gain 50 ability power for the rest of combat. Radiant Deathblade. Contributing to a kill grants the holder 15 attack damage for the rest of combat. This effect can stack any number of times and it starts at 4. Radiant Dragon's Claw now grants 500 bonus magic resistance including the components and the Radiant bonus is 30 ability power. I guess you'd go for this if everyone's going ability power because that is a lot of magic resistance. 
Next up, we have Radiant Frozen Heart. Reduces the attack speed of enemies within two hexes by 50%, and you get bonus 45 starting mana. That sounds actually really, really nice on a tank. Radiant Gargoyle Stoneplate. The holder gains 40 armor and 40 magic resist for each enemy targeting them. And then Radiant Giant Slayer. The holder's abilities and attacks do 10% bonus damage, and if the target has more than 1,100 health, the bonus increases is 75%. Oh yeah, if I did not mention guys, none of these numbers are final. We will have to see when they release the actual set on the 21st, if everything we see here is actually indeed what's gonna be going in. But contrary to the previous like leaks that I've done, this is officially from Riot and I got it from them directly. So it's like everything you see here is probably going in in its state right now. I'll probably be playing a couple games on the PBE when it does open up and they'll probably be using that as a time to kind of balance everything after seeing how everything plays out. So the themes of these items are probably gonna be the same, but again, the exact numbers might be a little different once the set releases. So Radiant Guardian Angel prevents the holder's first death, placing them in stasis instead. After two seconds, they return with 100% health and shed all negative effects, and you get 30% bonus attack speed. That sounds pretty good on Kale, if you ask me. Now onto Radiant Handed Justice. At the beginning of each planning phase, the holder gains both of the following. 45 attack damage and ability power, and attacks and abilities heal for 40% of damage dealt. That sounds really good too. Next up, we have Radiant Hexec Gunblade. The holder's magic and true damage from abilities heal them for 50% of the damage dealt. Excess healing fuels a shield that protects the holder against up to 600 damage, and you get 30 ability power. Radiant Infinity Edge grants 75% critical strike chance. Each component of critical strike chance above 100% becomes 1% critical strike damage, and you get a Radiant bonus of 40 critical strike damage. Alpha Radiant Ionic Spark. Enemies within 4 hexes have their magic resist reduced by 50%, when they cast an ability, they are zapped, taking magic damage equal to 400% of their max mana. Radiant Jeweled Gauntlet, the holder's magic and true damage from their ability can critically strike. The holder gains 80% bonus critical strike damage. Radiant Last Whisper, when the holder inflicts a critical hit, the target's armor is reduced by 70% for the rest of combat, and this effect does not stack. The Radiant bonus is also 30% crit strike chance. That's interesting, because with the Shadow Last Whisper, you got magic penetration as well, but now they remove that and it's just purely a physical damage item now. Radiant Locket of the Iron Solari, when combat begins, the holder and all allies within two hexes in the same row now gain a shield that blocks 600, 700, and 800 damage for 60 seconds, so it lasts the entire fight. If you had to ask me, this does seem a lot weaker than all the other Radiant items, so this item is either going to be super broken or super bad depending what the shield amounts actually are, but it is interesting that they are raising the duration to 60 seconds. Radiant Morella Namakon, when the holder deals magic damage or true damage with their ability, they burn the target, dealing 40% of the target's maximum health as true damage over 10 seconds, and reducing healing by 50% for the duration of the burn. Radiant Quicksilver, the holder gains immunity to crowd control in combat for 30 seconds, and you get a Radiant bonus of 30% attack speed. This I'm not really the biggest fan of, because I like Quicksilver working for both ability power and for attack damage carries, so now if you want like your Velkaz to be using a Quicksilver because you don't want him interrupted, putting this on him feels kind of bad because you lose out on the attack speed. I know he gets more mana, but it just doesn't seem like a flexible defensive item choice for every champion, which I think is what it should be. Rabidon's Radiance Death Cap gives 100 ability power, including components. Radiant Rapid Fire Cannon increases range by two hexes and grants 40% bonus attack speed. The wearer's attacks can no longer miss. Radiant Redemption, every five seconds, the holder radiates an aura within two hexes, healing them for 40% of their missing health, and affected allies take 30% reduced damage from multi-target abilities and attacks for five seconds. This one seems insane to me. A lot of the other items, they'd have their effect doubled, but when you double a radius, you get like more than double, you know? So that's why I think this is a really good item, just like theoretically. Radiant Runon's Hurricane, the holder's attacks fire a bolt at another enemy, dealing 100% of the holder's attack damage and applying on hit effects. These bolts can critically strike, and you get a Radiant bonus of 30% attack speed. Radiant Shroud of Stillness. When combat begins, the holder shoots a beam straight ahead and delays affected enemies' first spell cast, increasing their max mana by 65% until they cast. And this is what I'm talking about. There are some bonuses that help your entire team. So this Radiant bonus, you get 15 mana for all allies at the start of combat. That is completely nuts, at least on paper, because if you have like 9 units... That is 135 mana, that is completely bonkers, at least on paper. 
Radiant Spear of Shojin, the holder now restores 15 additional mana. Radiant Static Shiv, every third attack from the holder unleashes a chain of lightning that bounces to 6 enemies, dealing 100 magic damage and reducing their magic resistance by 50% for 5 seconds. Radiant Sunfire, every 2 seconds a random enemy within 4 hexes is burned for 40% of their max health. As true damage over 10 seconds, any healing they received is reduced by 50%. Radiant Thieves Gloves, oh man, I'm so excited about this one. At the beginning of each planning phase, the holder equips two temporary Radiant items. Oh, just a random note, one thing I'm going to miss about Shadow items is Shadow Fawn. I feel like that item was super, super fun, but it's just gone now. It's kind of sad. I wish there was a way to keep that particular item in the game somehow. Maybe they'll have it drop off of something, but I, I, that feels kind of weird too. Radiant Titans Resolve, when the holder takes damage or inflicts a critical strike, they gain 6 attack damage and ability power, and this stacks up to 25 times, at which point the holder gains 50 armor and magic resistance. Now on to Trap Claw Radiant. When combat begins, the holder and all allies within 1 hexes in the same row gain a shield that blocks the first enemy ability and stuns the ability's caster for 5 seconds. That seems really, really good. Um, it's essentially like a bunch of different trap claws, and you get three times the effect. Radiant Warmox now gives 2,000 bonus health. Radiant Zeke's Herald, when combat begins, the holder and all allies within one hexes in the same row gain 50% attack speed for the rest of combat. And then Radiant Zephyr, this one's another team-wide Radiant bonus. When combat begins, the wearer summons a Whirlwind on the opposite side of the arena that removes the closest enemy from combat for 10 seconds. That is a long time in TFT fights. It might not seem that long, but... Pretty much fights are decided within the first 10 seconds, so this is completely, completely bonkers. Radiant bonus is 10% attack speed for all allies at the start of combat. The last item we are going to go over is Radiant ZZ Rot, and at the start of combat, the holder taunts enemies within 2 hexes, and when the holder dies, a Radiant Void Spawn with bonus stats arises, taunting nearby enemies, and Radiant Void Spawns that arise from summon units are 25% effective. So those are all the Radiant items. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite and which shadow item you are going to be missing the most. And if you guys are enjoying the video so far, we got a couple more updates. Do hit the like below the video and consider subscribing if you are interested in more TFT content. I come out with a meta snapshot every single Friday. And I've been doing this for like almost two years now, which is completely nuts in my head. It's probably like one of the longest standing meta snapshots made by one person. Don't don't quote me on that. But it's all here on my channel or on my website. Either or works for you depending on what formats you like to use more. So let's go into the traits now. So some traits that changed are the forgotten traits. So forgotten is now a 2468 synergy and forgotten champions have bonus attack damage and ability power. Each victorious combat Forgotten Champions participate in adds to this bonus stacking up to four times. So it's essentially Warlord from last set if you guys played in set four and you guys are coming back to the game. Of course they had to do this because they removed shadow items. I will kind of miss that mechanic. I thought it was pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. Next, the God King trait is being removed and it is being replaced by Victorious and only Garen gets this. When Victorious Champions score a kill, their next attack is empowered to deal 40% of the target's missing health as bonus damage. Not as interesting as the God King concept, but I'm thinking it just never really worked out because no one really built like Garen comps, no one really built Darius comps, so that's why they removed them. But now let's get into the moment you guys were all waiting for. These are the new traits for set 5.5 and they are Inanimate, Sentinel, and Cannoneer. Let's start with Inanimate. This is Gwen's and only she has it because she's a legendary unit. At the start of combat, inanimate champions summon Harrowing Mist in the two hexes surrounding them for a few seconds, granting all allies within damage reduction from enemies outside of the mist. So if you guys played League of Legends, normally Gwen becomes untargetable in that thing, but now it's like a team buff and seems pretty cool. It's another support-ish legendary unit. Next we have Sentinel, and this is a 369 synergy. At the start of combat, the Sentinels with the highest health is shielded for three seconds. When the shield ends, a new shield is granted to the allied Sentinel with the lowest health. Whenever this shield is granted, the champion gains attack speed for the rest of combat. So there are a ton of champions here, so I guess we'll just get into the champions. Uh, we'll get into their abilities later, but Olaf, Senna, Aurelia, Pike, Rakan, Galio, Lucian, and Akshan are going to be in this. If you guys haven't heard of Akshan yet, I'm guessing he's going to be the new League of Legends champion, but he's pretty cool. He runs around the map and kind of spins around. I, I, I wish I had footage of this, but it's so unfortunate because when they did the set reveal, I was at someone else's house, 
and I couldn't actually record that much. We have like a very lo-fi recording here, and this is all we have for me until I get onto PBE, which is very unfortunate because I was looking forward to a set reveal, and when I got one, I just wasn't at my like regular computer to record. Very unfortunate. No worries, we will have a lot of fun during the actual set anyways. So onto Cannoneer, after casting their ability, Cannoneer champions replace their next attack with a cannon shot, after dealing a percentage of their maximum mana as physical damage to enemies near the target. These are going to be Senna, Tristana, Misfortune, and Lucian. So now that we have the traits out of the way, let's get on to the champions. This is probably like what you guys were most excited about. We'll do it, uh, should we do it by tier? Let's go ahead and do this by tier. So let's start off with Olaf. He is a one cost, he's a Sentinel Skirmisher. His ability is Berserker Rage. And essentially it's a passive. Olaf gains one, two, and 3% attack speed for each 1% of missing health and his attacks heal him for 30, 40, and 100 health. So I feel like what they were missing from set five were some one cost reroll comps. Bane never really took off. She was strong for like one patch, not even one patch. She was strong for half a patch, and then they turbo nerfed her right as she became strong. So no one ever rerolled one cost in the last set. Hopefully Olaf changes this. Senna is a Sentinel Cannoneer, and her ability is Last Embrace. Senna launches a Black Mist towards the furthest enemy, stopping on the first enemy hit. That enemy is stunned for 1.5, 2, and 3 seconds, and all nearby enemies are dealt a bunch of magic damage. Aurelia. This is a two cost unit, and she is a Legionnaire, Sentinel, and Skirmisher. Aurelia has always been a three trait unit, which is pretty interesting, but her ability is Defiant Dance. Aurelia surrounds herself with blades for four seconds, granting a bunch of damage reduction, increasing by 10% each time she attacks, up to 90%. When the effect ends, she strikes her target for a bunch of magic damage. Next is Pike. Pike is back. Uh, it's a two cost unit that stuns half the enemy team. Uh, Sentinel Assassin. Phantom Undertow. I, I wonder why they brought Pike back because, or at least like make him a three cost because you're getting AOE CC from a two cost unit. Like that is just completely nuts in my mind. But Pike leaves a Phantom at his location and then dashes behind the furthest enemy. After one second, his Phantom returns to Pike, dealing a bunch of magic damage and stunning all enemies who passes through it. Tristana is a two cost now. Hellion Cannoneer. So more Yordles. Rocket Jump. This actually is really cool. I, I played with this. Again, I wish I had footage that I was able to show you. Like, I just couldn't record on my computer. I, I barely was able to play because it was like a very old computer. But Tristana leaps behind the furthest enemy, retargeting to them and gaining a bunch of attack speed for four seconds. If there is an enemy adjacent to her, she instead leaps as far away from all enemies as she can. So she's just jumping in and out all the time. And she was really broken on the playtest, but let's see if that's going to be changed for the public beta environment. Misfortune is a 3 cost forgotten cannoneer. Her ability is make it rain, so no more legendary Misfortune, now she's a 3 cost. Misfortune rains 3 waves of bullets down around her targets, dealing a bunch of magic damage to enemies in the area and reducing their incoming healing by 50% for 8 seconds. So if you guys play League of Legends, this is her E ability. Rakan is a Sentinel Renewer and his ability is Battle Dance. Oh, Rakan was super tanky when, when I played him, but Rakan launches a feather towards his target, dealing a bunch of magic damage to the first enemy hit. Rakan then heals all nearby allies for a bunch of their percent missing health with an increased radius if the feather killed an enemy. Next we have Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is 4 cost. He is a Mystic Abomination Revenant, so another Revenant, another Abomination. I'll go over which champions are being removed right after this. Uh, but his ability is Crow Storm. After a brief channel, Fiddle Six teleports behind his target and summons a Murder of Crows for 4, 4, and 8 seconds, dealing a bunch of magic damage per second to all enemies within. Enemies that die within the flock extend its duration by 1 second and heal Fiddle Sticks for a bunch of his maximum health. That seems really, really good. I want to do some Fiddle Six carry. He's an Abomination, so it's going to be very interesting what items you actually want to put on him. Galio is a 4 cost. He is a Draconic Sentinel Knight. Oh my god, Galio is so tanky, guys. Shield of Durand, Galio charges the area around him for 2 seconds, taunting all enemies and gaining 60, 70, and 90% damage reduction. Upon releasing the charge, Galio deals a bunch of magic damage to all enemies within 3 hexes and heals for 50% of the damage blocked. Like, just think about that for a moment. That's just so nuts. So now we have Lucian. Lucian fires 12 shots in directions over 4 seconds, each hitting for 50% of his attack damage and dealing... 40, 50, and 100 magic damage. Lucian fires extra shots based on his attack speed. 
and Lucian will dash during the calling to keep hitting enemies. So this is essentially Lucian from set 2, but he's a lot worse now because in set 2, when you paired him up with Senna, he got a built-in Guardian Angel, but he just doesn't have that anymore. So he, you have to position him a lot better now. Before you frontlined him, but now you have to like backline him and try to aim him and dodge stuff. It, it makes sense that it happened that way, but like set to Lucian was really cool. I think he is one of the coolest champions ever made in TFT. Now onto the legendaries. The first one we have is Akshan. Again, this is the new champion in League of Legends, I'm guessing. I, I think they're releasing it in League of Legends. I don't think they made like a champion specific to TFT. His ability is Hero Swing. In his passive, Akshan's attacks reduce the target's armor by 50% for 5 seconds. In his active ability, Akshan launches his grappling hook and swings untargetably towards the furthest enemy, gaining a bunch of attack speed for 4 seconds. Akshan will continue to attack the nearest enemy at double his attack speed while swinging. So with him, you don't need to get Last Whisper, I guess, because he has it built in. And then he just gets a ton of attack speed. He, he was carrying a lot of the games I was seeing. Um, but it might have just been a case of everyone trying to go for him because he's new. Next we have Gwen. She's a 5 cost, she's a mystic, and she's an animate, and her ability is skip and slash. Gwen dashes around her target and performs 3 rapid snips in a cone in front of her, dealing 125, 175, and 777, plus 6, 8, and 50% of the target's maximum health as magic damage. Snip steals 1 armor and magic resist from their target. And every other cast, Gwen will perform double the amount of snips. <laughs> oh man, um, that is, it sounds confusing, but it sounds pretty good as well. My favorite champ so far is probably going to be either Fiddle or Galio. But again, like haven't played too much with it. We didn't play that many games. But with that in mind, let's go over what champions are leaving. So Warwick, Victor, Katarina, Trundle, Pantheon, Mordekaiser, LeBlanc, Lissandra, Morgana, Kindred, Rise, Tarek, and Darius are all gone. That's right, they removed Darius. They removed all the problem champs of Trundle, Pantheon, and Mordekaiser. They killed the assassins because LeBlanc was carrying too hard, so they just removed her from the game. Uh, Katarina as well. I wonder why they did that one. Um, I guess because Forgotten isn't that big of a thing anymore. But Rise is gone too. He was an issue later. And Kindred. Ooh, it's going to be hard to get four rangers now. They removed Kindred because Akshan's a ranger, and yeah, that's that's what it's looking like now. Very interesting takeouts. I'm going to miss Tarek. I thought he was very underrated in set four. His synergies just sucked, let's be honest. He was a knight, verdant, and no, no one uses those, but on his own, he's like very, very good in my opinion. But yeah, that's going to be set 5.5. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope you guys are too. Again, going to be releasing a bunch of guides, a bunch of gameplay for this the next coming weeks well for the whole set actually so um yeah let me know what you guys thought of the new set and connect with me on all my social media twitter instagram youtube my website all that good stuff i'll probably be doing a giveaway on one of those platforms so be sure to check the description below to follow up on that or join my discord i'll probably post it in my discord discord.gg slash bunny muffins we probably have like one of the biggest tft communities out of like every content creator i think we do have the biggest one uh, apart from like the official TFT Discord. So definitely join that if you have not already. We do a bunch of like fun stuff in there, talk about the game. We get every single TFT announcement like updated as soon as they come out. And we also have like a bunch of like volunteer coaching there as well. So that is it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, thanks so much for the support because without you guys, I would not have been able to get this preview. I'm very thankful for that. Also like shout out to Riot for inviting me this time. And yeah, that is it for me. I will see you all later.